Hi everyone, I am here today in Los Angeles with the lovely Alyssa Goodman. Um, she is a holistic nutritionist, um, a lifestyle cleanse expert, and the author of Cancer Hacks. She is also a cancer survivor and has a really incredible story about what she went through and then also what she did with that experience to help others. So I'd love to <laughs> tell it and thank you for having me in your lovely home. Ah, well, thank you. I'm honored to be on your show and to be interviewed by you. I mean, I always love this stuff. Yeah. So anything to get the word out there that we all can be healthier. Absolutely. In every way. And part of what I, my mission is at Weldy is to show the proof. Um, a lot of us you know, can talk about a lot of things, but without showing that there are people who were able to reverse chronic health conditions and through an integrative yeah. approach like you did, it's kind of like all words up here and not a lot of tangible you know, facts. So that's why I really love to showcase stories like yours. Your work and your life was really influenced by the experience of having Hodgkin's lymphoma, which you were diagnosed with at 32, which is younger young. than me. Mm, um, yes. Too so young. please tell us, I know you were a mom at that time or you were almost a mom at that time. I had been trying to get pregnant. So interestingly, I haven't, I don't talk about this that much, but I had had probably four miscarriages before I was diagnosed. Oh so it almost was like the universe was saying, you know, you got to get clean up your act health wise before you can get pregnant. Absolutely. I've learned so. more and more about that as I've had friends go through miscarriages in the last couple of years that often it's a bit of a blessing. It's a bit yes. of your body saying, this vessel is not prepared. It's Let's not figure it out. And then you can maybe, um, yeah. you know, have that. So tell us well, your story. I, was, I wasn't always healthy as a kid. And I got every health issue known to man. The chicken box, the strep, the tonsillitis, the mono, the shingles. Um, even when I was born, I had a low red blood cell count. And I used to have to get blood shots every 28 days. So there was a lot going on there and eczema and like, you know, all these things that people can relate to. So I think I never had a strong immune system and um, I was always behind the eight ball. And the other thing was I was brought up in a type A family who were very motivated and very successful and actually got everything done that they needed to get done. And here I was like, you know, sort of trying to pick up the pieces behind them and never feeling like I could measure up, I couldn't get anything done, I didn't feel good enough. So there was that emotional component that was weighing very heavy on me, plus I had the physical component. So I continued that throughout my life and graduated college and moved to New York City and you know picked absolutely the worst city probably for me in terms of health because it was so fast paced and so crazy. The energy was so crazy nonstop as you know. And I got into the advertising marketing business, which was a lot of entertaining and a lot of work. Um, and basically was, did that for 10 years. So, and was sick all the time there as well, but always like dabbling to see what I could do to like feel better. I was always reading books and trying to find alternative methods um, because my mom in the early days was asthmatic. She took sugar out of the house at, at an early stage. She took white bread and soda and all those things. So she was kind of on that track. And so I saw that she got better with her asthma. So I was thinking, you know, there has to be some other ways to live and not be sick all the time and not feel like this. But then I moved, I said to my husband when we got married, Let's move west because New York is too crazy for me. I just can't see commuting into the city, having a family, and that just seems like it's going to take me down. So we moved to L.A., and I wanted a, just a lower-paced life and also more sunshine and better weather, um, and we did, and that's when I was diagnosed with the Hodgkin's lymphoma. And it was a wake-up call. I mean, I knew my life wasn't going the right direction in a lot of ways, but I didn't really want to focus on it. And when that happened, it was scary, really scary. Because you think of cancer, all of us still this day think cancer, we might die. Yeah, I mean, I think many people do, yeah, right? Um, right? It's one of the few chronic illnesses I can think of where it seems like a ticking time bomb more yes. than anything else. I mean, obviously a lot of them are, but something about, you know, high blood pressure or a low thyroid, you sort of feel like, okay, well, I could sort of just manage it and get along for right. a while. I'm not going to feel my best. I'm not going to be operating my best. But 
it's not like if I don't do anything, I'm going to be dead in a few months. Exactly. Whereas cancer is like, oh my God, there's this thing. It's, you know, I think Hodgkin's lymphoma doesn't have like a tumor per se, right? It's a blood. Well, it is, you could have tumors in the lymphatic system. So they okay. did remove like a, a swollen lymph node. Okay. So they can, you know, it could be maybe not tumor related, but they have swollen lymph nodes. Got it. And it's in the lymphatic system, which travels throughout the entire body. And as that's you know. really so connected, as you were talking about, to just having a crazy lifestyle with too yes. many toxins yeah. because your lymphatic system drains yes. them out. You got it. Yeah. The buildup of the toxins and the buildup of the emotional toxicity. Yeah. Both I've things. I've been thinking so much about that lately. But tell me the yeah. story from getting your diagnosis so, to getting well. Then when I was diagnosed, I went to three doctors and two of them were very hardcore. The cancer hadn't been staged yet. And basically they were like chemo, radiation, you know, we're gonna have to freeze your eggs because I hadn't had kids. We're gonna basically, do you have a donor because we might have to do a transplant? And I was like, whoa, that's yeah. so, you know, we don't even know what stage it is. And the third, it was very scary, that part. And then the third doctor, that I went to was a radiologist oncologist who kind of fell out of the sky from a friend and I went to see him because reluctantly really because I was like oh, a third doctor I'm this is like tiresome and when I went to see him he said to me you know it was staged then it was an early stage and he said you know what's your life like are you stressed are you happy you know are you living your purpose are you you know just what's going on with you and I just burst into tears and I was like I'm so miserable you know my whole life has been like playing catch up and not feeling good enough and I'm constantly stressed I mean I I think I live in a fight or flight mode continually um, because of all the things that are in my head and and also what I am not feeling good all the time so he said I think we could take care of this without like you know bone marrow transplant and freezing your eggs and he did say that we probably had to do chemo and radiation but I decided after I did some research, I was really scared about the chemo because I hadn't had kids and I and because of my immune system, I knew both of those things might take me down. So I chose to do half the radiation and the doctors were not happy with me because I just took it into my own hands and I was praying that this was gonna work. So, and then I started juicing because in, in LA, there was one juice place at that time. Now, of course, they're everywhere, but um, I started juicing. It was not too far from where we lived, and Mrs. Gucci's, which is Mrs. Whole, which is Whole Foods now. All these wonderful things were in LA. You know, the wellness community was here: acupuncture, naturopaths, you know, yoga. So I started diving into all of that, and I I healed. Thank God. So you did no chemo and only no half chemo. the radiation that they wanted you to do. Yeah. And you just kind of then sat back I and prayed. prayed. <laughs> yes. Wow. And yeah. well, not really sat back. You yeah. started doing all of these I other did. I therapies. proactively, and I went into therapy major because I knew my emotional stability needed to be worked on. So, I mean, you know, ther that part of the equation is huge. And it's bigger than most people think. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I have a I, lately, I've been realizing how much emotional traumas that are unresolved, whether they're yeah. hugely significant or just perceived as significant at a young age, right. um, kind of can fester in your body and create this inflammation, which then can lead to chronic diseases like cancer. Yeah. I think that we all like have, you know, microscopic cancer cells in our body. We all have toxins. We all have, you know, bad stuff. That doesn't mean you're going to get sick. But I think when you, right, when those emotional components and that trauma raises its ugly head, and we all, I think, have some form of trauma too. And to learn how to let that go is so crucial, I see in these days with all the health issues. You got better, how long right. did that take? It took about, and they gave, like they told me I couldn't get try to get pregnant for two years. So it took about two years, I would say, until I did start to feel stronger and better. And then I got pregnant with two girls, one and then three years later, another one. Um, and they're 23 and 20 today. And basically then, but 11 years later, my husband was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So that, was such a huge like oh my god you know two parents who have had cancer what are the odds of that i don't know if they're i mean they might be a little more odds these days because of the environment we live in the stress the toxins all of that but 
yeah, at that time, I hadn't heard of that very, I mean, very seldom. And, but we were so similar. We were both really high stress people. And emotionally, I think we felt, you know, a little bit not good enough and, you know, not worthy. I think there were a lot of emotional things going on with us. Not that this gives you cancer, but he was a, he loved animal protein. So he ate a ton of animal protein. And as you know, in those days, we didn't think about organic or pasture raised or hormone free. Um, and then he also was a major, loved sugar. So after every meal, we had, he had to have dessert and it was crappy dessert, you know, it was like the M&Ms or things like that. So we know that those things are not the best for cancer, um, but I'm not saying that, you know, just him doing that caused his cancer. Besides his diet, I mean, yeah. can you think of any other possible reason that you both could have gotten cancer? It's incredible. He passed away a year and a half after his treatment. Um, he had, his treatment was more, way more intense than mine. It was, a, he had two bone marrow transplants in a year and a half which is really unheard of. And his immune system was so compromised, so he actually didn't really die from the cancer, he died from fungal pneumonia. So basically, after he passed away, my a friend of mine said, you know what, I just wanna test your house for EMFs. And I was like, EMFs, what the hell is that? I wasn't really up on that at the time, and she was very much into all this. She had had her house tested, and there were, there were a lot of electronic magnetic frequencies in the house, and that, we do know, has a correlation with cancer. So she tested the house, and it was so fascinating. We were in an old house, 1920s. We had remodeled it a bunch of times, but when she tested it, the EMFs on his side of the bed were off the charts high. And also in our family room where we spent a lot of time. And again, that's just one of many factors that cause cancer, but it was the, the number on the, on the meter reader was incredibly high. So I can't stop thinking about that, that the, because we didn't have cell phones next to our bed at those times. We didn't have our computers in bed. It wasn't that kind of, you know, that many years ago, we didn't do that. His, Father also had cancer and passed away when he was two years old. It was skin cancer. So I'm not, you know, I don't think those things correlate, but I think it was the stress, the diet, the, the emotional component, the trauma in his life, and potentially it was, you know, just overloaded with the toxins. Since we didn't have cell phones next to our beds, how was that electromagnetic frequency? Oh, that's a really good question because what I think was happening was we, when we redid the house, our wires weren't like, they weren't properly put together. They weren't grounded. Oh, so, so it in the house, just... the, it was an old house and I think the wires weren't grounded um, properly and that's what causes EMFs as well, the electricity that goes through the house. That's so interesting. Yeah, I know. You know, mold. We have all these things to worry about, right? Yeah. The house. So did you then, you know, yeah. do sort of... I ended up selling the house a couple yeah, years later because it didn't feel right. But I mean, there are all those things too. I mean, we had built the house. We had, you know, there was mold in the house. Um, it was an old house. There's all these chemicals that come off of, you know, paint and carpet and furniture these days. So... It is a little crazy, but not to scare anybody, you know, because we have lived with all this stuff and some people are completely fine. Right. It's just a matter of understanding kind of sounds like your risk from, you know, starting out life with a bit of a compromised immune yeah. system and then um, just, I guess, some odds of those things coming together to yeah. actually create cancer. Create in cancer. As well. And there was a book that I read, Radical Remission. You heard of I've heard of it. I Kelly have Turner read it. Yes. wrote it. She did, I think, 10 years, did her PhD for the book. And when she came up with nine modalities, she was interviewing stage four cancer people who healed, not from Western, from other alternative methods. And seven out of these nine modalities were emotional. And one was food and one was supplements. I just interviewed Kelly Gores from, from the Heal Healed, documentary. Right. And this book and this woman, Kelly Turner, was in it. So she was yes. talking about these as well. It is literally on my notes app now. I look at these nine all the time because, right. yes, I'm dealing with a bit of a thyroid thing right now, but in general, I don't think of myself as a chronic illness patient. But if I can be doing or working on these nine things just as part of my human life, right. then perhaps right. I can prevent them because I imagine it works kind of inversely as well. So, it does. So, you know, the, the forgiveness component and obviously the diet component and um, herbs and supplements and things like that, yeah. it's just... 
it's wild um, that they were able to kind of gather all of that great scientific research and see how much of it is really in your mind. head, in your mind. Yeah. I know. It is. It's powerful. It is. And it's kind of exciting because it's like as long as you're willing to do the tough yeah. work, you can prevent or right. reverse a lot of uh, Absolutely. a lot of serious things. That's so, my big thing. So you, you can reverse, I feel like, almost anything. Yeah. If I, you really want to. Right. And also just knowing, I mean, using what the conventional system gives us to know, okay, I do want to do a bit of the radiation because yeah. I want to, you know, get this thing before it gets worse, but I'm going to do all these other therapies so that I'm not going to destroy my immune system and even further because yeah. I knew it was an issue for me ahead of time with right. things that had happened. So I feel like that's taking all of the factors into account and making a calculated decision yeah. as like an empowered patient rather than the doctor says this one thing, I'm just going to do this one thing and not think about like any of the other things that I might be able to. So I, I feel like you were way ahead of your time. <laughs> I was lucky. I think, you know, there was something inside me that, you know, wanted to go that direction. So I definitely knew I wanted to live and I wanted to have a better life and I wanted to feel better in my body. How, speaking of trauma, do you go from putting your cancer into remission, then having your husband pass away? I mean, I am newly married. Like, I think I would just I know, fall crumble apart. and fall, fall apart. I to, did. Yeah. So did you have to do the whole emotional healing all over all again? All over again. Yes. Yeah, it took a long time. It's still, it's still unbelievable. You know, he's been gone, was it 13 years now? But it's, he was only 45, and he seems so strong and on the outside. And to think that he's not here with us is, is still hard. Um, and it's still a trauma. So it's a, it's a PTSD that happens for myself and my girls. So with my fiance, when he's had some health issues lately, we go right back into that PTSD mode, which is which is hard. I mean, you're always going to have it, but we have to get some tools to figure out how to get us out of it, not stay in it. You had better tools yes, because yeah, of what you had gone I through. Did. So we didn't send you know, back into a chronic disease diagnosis of some kind. Right. Um, and then you really made an amazing transition in your life to actually working in this field as so many of us have, <laughs> because it's like, once you go through something, you feel like you can't keep it to yourself. No, no. Um, so you gotta tell, spread the goodness. Yeah, exactly. So tell, tell the story of how you kind of got to where you are today with your career. So after he passed away, I was like, okay, what the heck am I gonna do? Cause I have these two girls that are 10 and seven. And I really didn't want, I wasn't thinking of being a nutritionist at all, but I did want to learn more about how to keep the three of us healthy because I was worried about them with two parents who had cancer, who knew what was going to come up the pipeline with the two of them, plus the trauma and the PTSD they had gone through. I knew that was going to be a problem ongoing into their adult life. So I went back to school to study about all these things. And I was interested in it for myself because I knew I wanted to move on in my life and get healthy too. So I wasn't doing so well at that time either from the depression, anxiety, panic attacks after he passed away. Like, yikes, I have to go back into the world and, and raise this family as well as probably go back to work and all of that. But so I went back and studied in Eastern and Western nutrition, all the different modalities, which was I just, I loved it. It was so much fun. The Chinese Ayurvedic and just things that have been around for centuries, the herbal remedies, the homeopathics. I mean, it was just so fascinating, way more fascinating than the Western, you know, modalities, the diets and all of that stuff. Who wants stuff. to study surgery when you <laughs> no. can study, you know, right. the acupuncture and exactly. radians and energy. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the whole energy part. I'm into all of that. Energy crystals, anything you throw my way. But, um, and then a friend of mine brought Cafe Gratitude down from San Francisco, the vegan restaurant that popped up here about six years ago. And she said, will you put a cleanse together for us? And I knew nothing about cleansing. Um, and that was so incredible too, because um, it was a perfect opportunity for me to get into, you know, getting healthier as well, because cleansing on a daily basis is what I believe now is really crucial for all of us. So I put that program together for her and I did it for like four and a half years and I did one for M Cafe. It's a macrobiotic restaurant here in Los Angeles. And I did a little of that for Erewhon. So they're all three amazing places in terms of health and wellness. Um, Erewhon now is, you know, just incredible. These I days went there in terms a few of... <laughs> days ago. I was just like, this is like Mecca. It is. It was amazing. It's Mecca and it's also like 
oh my God, you go numb because there's so much there that you don't even know what you should be picking or not picking is what's happening with the yes. wellness space. I have it's a, overwhelming. a health food store that's near me in New York and I didn't even know I could have so many various options on like a, yeah. you know, plant-based yogurt, for example. Exactly. I walked into Erewhon and I'm like, I, what, what am do I, I going to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what's happened. It's become a little overkill these days. Like, where do I go? What do I do? What diet do I do? All that stuff. So. That's how my career started was, you know, I got into this cleansing role. And then four years ago, people were saying, hey, will you cook for me and deliver food? And I, I'm not really a chef, but I do love food and I love really good, healthy food. So I found someone to help me put a cleanse together myself. So I have a soup cleanse. Cleanse is like a funny word. It's I don't believe in like the deprivation of a juice cleanse or starvation of, you know, just drinking water for so many days or the master or all that stuff. I think that's really depriving your system of things. So my program is just, it's all healthy food. No gluten, no dairy, no sugar, um, no process, no non-GMO stuff, but it's tons of veggies. Like we don't eat enough veggies and we don't eat enough fiber. And I'm trying to get people off of, not completely off animal protein because I'm an 80-20 girl. So I can't survive without some animal protein. But there are studies, that, you know, legitimate studies that show animal protein do increase your risk for cancer. Especially processed, right? I mean, I know the, oh my the God. connection between yes. um, processed meat and being carcinogenic. And, Absolutely. And yet we still, many of my most intelligent <laughs> friends are just like they, they, you know, just think bacon is the most glorious thing and kind of celebrate it yeah. as our whole culture does. Yeah. And it is right. delicious. I it get is. it. But, you know, I'm like the kind of annoying bear of bad news that's always like this is the only thing that we know for sure is like carcinogenic in the right. food world like and why is nobody you're not listening <laughs> right and also like cold cuts you know I even know. turkey cold cuts that's right. the same category and people are sort of it's somehow just not part of no. health care as far as like what's recommended and you know like at least avoid this I've never heard that before yeah. you know and I, know. I guess you hear it on some official recommendations here and there but Nobody Not really enough. seems to adhere to it. Yeah, yeah, it's just like either you're a vegan or you're eating all of this stuff. And yes. I think there's a nice In middle between. ground, which is what you were talking about with the 80-20 of similar to what I try to follow. Like I'm only going to have meat if I know it's pasture raised and yeah. I know it's grass fed and um, hormone free and all of that and not have too much of it and try to have smaller portions when I do have it. Yeah. But I know that there are certain vitamins and nutrients that for me are I've been told I do need that a bit in my life. Right. Um, right. And even like, you know, there's just some fantastic sheep cheese that once in a while, <laughs> it's just going to happen. I don't want to no. live in a world where I, I can't have it once in a while. There's also a sheep yogurt at Erewhon that is to die for. So never do I feel good after eating the whole container. So, but I agree. Like there has to be some balance and you don't yeah. want to deprive yourself of certain things. I mean, Every once in a while, I have to have a really good burger, you know? Like, yeah. No, I'm not a but, burger girl, but once, you're right, like every six months, I'm sort of in a situation where I'm like, that you're is craving. what I am having. <laughs> yes. And then yeah. I'm like, look, so who's going to split it with me? You know, right. <laughs> like, right. looking for the person at the table. Dr. Christy Fung, she's a breast cancer surgeon. She wrote a book, um, Breast Cancer Manual, in June it came out. She did a two years worth of research on the, you know, what increases cancer risk. And she is now 100% vegan. So, um, yeah, so there's, you know, there's legitimate stuff out there, but we're not talking about that enough. It does increase your heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, dementia, cancer. So, I mean, we're not eating clean animal pro products is what's happening. And, you know, when we're talking about energy a little bit, these animals, the way they're killed, so to speak, they're not, they're, they're traumatized. Right. We sometimes ingest a bit of that energy and people don't really even equate to that. So, yes, they have antibiotics and hormones in them, but then, you know, there could be some energy in that meat, even though it's dead, that I've I don't never think, thought about yeah, that, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. That's not so good. So Taking on their problems in exactly. a way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I put this program together, and I, just for people to go vegan for five days, they can reset their body. They can sleep better, lose weight, have better mental clarity. You know, emotionally, they can feel better, more energized. I've watched this happen. Um, and it's such a beautiful thing. And five days is not long. Right. I was and, just going to, I just did 25 days or oh, whatever wow. on the adrenal yeah. thyroid. And it was very strict. But I mean, five, now I could do five yeah. days anytime. And no big deal, yeah. right? Yeah. 
It's been really fun. It's four years I've been doing this and I service about 100 people a month and I get to cook for them and deliver this food to them for five days. And it is filled with love and nourishment and you know, it's all organic and just, it's how I love to eat as well. But I don't think we get enough love and nourishment in our food either. That's another thing. I yeah. remember interviewing um, Dana James. Or, oh yeah, uh, Donna, Don Donna yes, James. I love her. Um, about her book, uh, The Archetype Diet, yeah. talking about the vibrational frequency of, first of all, col different colors of food. We know like Roy G. Biv, and we know that different colors have different frequency. Yeah. Um, and the same is true for love and food. And so yeah. when something is made for you with like love and attention and somebody who cares for you and really like puts effort into cooking, that has a very different frequency when you are consuming that food yeah. and even through the digestive process than something that was on a conveyor belt by somebody you don't know who might hate his job and you know whatever else it might yeah. might be going on so that was the first time i had ever really thought about mm -hmm. the vibrational nature of food and you see that trend now with you know the Marie Kondo stuff and just the vibrational nature of your home and is it filled with love do you I love, love the show. things that you have or are they just yeah. causing you more stress or yeah. have you not even just thought about it you just have yeah. stuff and it's neither you love it or you hate it or you're just it's just, just there. there yeah it's thinking like, of space exactly same and thing yeah same, same thing, thing with, with food, food. I yes. know like are you eating this because you absolutely love it and it's nourishing mm -hmm. to you or you're just like shoving something in because then you're about to go into a meeting and you'll eat whatever right I'd never just to fill your body you begin to think so differently about yeah. it yeah the sad thing is we wait till something happens we wait till a trauma event happens or something you know a health issue comes up and that's the hardest thing for me with a lot of clients who come in and they they're having heavy-duty health issues but before that they didn't even think about it so yeah. now all of a sudden they have to retrain themselves and go back to a place with what we're talking about and it's hard as you get older yeah. you become so accustomed to a certain way of living and you just think you're invincible it's right. not always or like the case. you somehow lose perspective on i've heard you know somebody i know is in their 60s uh say like well i tried that diet to lower yes. my um you know uh high blood pressure but it just it wasn't realistic so yeah. now i'm taking this drug yeah and i'm like just I guess it's not worth it to you to yeah. not give up this, you know, Cheetos or something. Like, I just, it was so hard for me to understand that somebody could consciously say, I don't want to eat well so yeah. that I can, you know, so I'd rather take this drug that has all these side effects and blah, blah, blah. It just, I don't know. It well, just, that's it was our society too. You know, we've been taught that. We've been taught we got to eat animal protein. We've been taught that we, you know, sugar's okay, so to speak, or dairy's okay, right? Just from advertising, marketing, and yeah, yeah. and the drug pharmaceutical the companies. The food pyramid, I mean, and yeah. I'm not putting pharmaceutical companies down because I think, you know, there's a time and place for all that stuff. We do, we were talking about the Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. You, sometimes you got to go on meds to get over a certain hump when you don't feel good and all of that stuff. But it does take some effort to get to the other side and think holistically and think, you know, how am I really going to heal the root cause of what's going on right. here? And like, not go to the meds necessarily first without trying anything else you know right. it's oh like I don't even I have to do this well you know there's like four other steps you could have taken first and that Very might have so. all worked you know right it's like don't you want to even give that a shot no okay and um, what's interesting is those steps could be you know the simple things like yeah eat, going back to maybe eating more real food and taking the sugar dairy gluten out or watching it and then maybe not drinking as much coffee as we do right. just sleeping better um, learning some modalities just to de-stress a bit, things that don't even cost a lot of money. This wellness and holistic lifestyle is so expensive, but if you look at the foundations of it, it's actually something that is a lot less expensive than any healthcare experience you might have. That's true. Um, and it's yeah. just a cultural misperception, I it think. Is. I know. Um, although orga organic blueberries nowadays, it's ridiculous how yeah, much the price. A small, a small container, maybe it's $8 something, and you look at a hamburger at McDonald's, but this no. is artificially low, right? This is not the actual cost of that food because if they've done all these things to bring that down with different subsidies and not bringing in the actual healthcare cost of living on that diet and <laughs> all that stuff. And yeah. if you were not, you know, you, you fed your cattle real uh, grass, you know, how yeah. much that would cost and things like that. So 
it's that's what I say to people is like, well, it, it doesn't. It's not that this is expensive. This is the real cost of food, right. and this is just made artificially low. And like that's sort of a pay pay later situation. Absolutely. Um, we don't think about pay later, do we? No, we just, not just, very we, much. We want immediate help. You know, just like give me the help right now. Right. And like whatever I need to do to eat, and not we just don't think about the future. You wrote a whole book called Cancer Hacks. Mm -hmm young people in their 20s and 30s are starting to see cancer in their lives. I mean, you yeah. actually had cancer, yes. but a lot of yeah. us are, you know, I've been hearing people in the 30s that are getting little things like breast cancer, prostate cancer, like things yeah. that are really, you're Too sort young. of shocked, you know, and then of course our parents are also getting them more in droves and having, you know, aunts and uncles and things like that. So I think overall, there's nothing more interesting on the health side to people of every generation that's alive right now than understanding how we can prevent cancer and right. so and and reverse cancer. Right. And I feel like you just wrote a whole book on that. So <laughs> share a couple of things that you um, I learned. Mean, I think that we need to tap into like, did we have any traumas growing up and um, are we living with some PTSD? Because, you know, the first seven years of your life, your subconscious is fully downloaded. Um, that's a research fact. So if you had anything happen in those first seven years, um, you definitely carry that with you. You're, we operate, you know, 98% out of our subconscious. We're barely conscious. Maybe we're 5% conscious. So we have these messages that we keep telling ourselves and our body you know, that we're scared or this happened. We don't want this to happen again. You know, we're on hyper alert. That is a huge thing. I mean, I, I don't want to say everybody needs to go into therapy, but maybe like tap into, you know, what is working, what isn't working in your life. And, um, and do you feel like satisfied and, and, and happy is a little bit overused word, but you know, like content and grateful and just, you know, are you living your passion and purpose? We were talking about that. That's a little overused too these days yeah. in the whole, in the health world, but you know, just like, are you really where you need to be? Because um, having that feeling of like calmness and gratefulness and feeling like, wow, I really, I do really love my life. Yeah, there are things I always want to change, but like that is huge. I mean, in the whole cancer health issue world, I mean, if we don't have that, like that just permeates through to getting us into a place where we make the wrong decisions for food, we don't sleep, we, you know, we're stressed, um, we don't exercise enough, we, we choose bad relationships. So I guess maybe going back to the place of, do I love myself? Yeah. Because I'm like 58, so I didn't really start loving I, myself till two I years ago. I cannot believe that, but I can't believe I just ahead. said that number. <laughs> um, I just started really tapping into love for myself two years ago and my whole world changed absolutely changed. So was I, there anything in particular you used to I, get there? I like think a it was book or something? the Hashimoto's we talked about. Um, cause after the cancer, I got hypothyroidism cause they radiated my thyroid. So I had hypothyroidism and then I had my first daughter, which was traumatic and I got Hashimoto's. So I dealt with that for 21 years on meds, trying to figure out, I had anxiety, depression, you know, celiac, all these different things. Those health issues that I talked about earlier in my life, you know, I still kind of had them later in my life too. I did get through all of them, but I realized I really wanted to get on the road to healing this Hashimoto's and get to a place where I was feeling great. I was feeling good, but I didn't know what great meant. That word would not come out of my mouth. So basically that's when I met the medical medium and I did a protocol of his, and then I started feeling great. I mean, that's probably a whole other segment. Also, things started coming up emotionally for me when I got to that great place. And I realized like there was a big component of, you know, I'm very much a perfectionist. I'm so used to beating up on myself. You know, again, that sort of method of, like I talked about, I was younger, like I'm not good enough. And when I got into the whole wellness world and things were going really well, it wasn't enough even. It was like, oh no, I got to do better. I got to, you know, reach more people. I have to do this and that. And it just, it burned me out. And it was like, wow, that's interesting. Like, I feel great, but I, that great only takes you so far. That's so interesting that you said that even when you were having success, you felt, no, I have to go further. And you're still beating yourself up because I think a lot of us, you know, feel there's like this, oh, well, like if you just get there, 
Um, but yeah. really it's just all inside you, whether or not when you get there, you'll be satisfied and yeah. happy or, or not and be able to say great job and, you right. know, take a break and feel just good about it or continue the same sort of negative self-talk and yeah. just push yourself. I mean, it's always that's good to push yourself. There has to be some balance. And I think that's with our young people today too. You know, you were talking about that younger generation. I mean, they're pushing themselves harder more than I think we did. They don't give themselves that time to just chill out and have any type of boredom in their life because the phone, the Netflix, you know, which is great. I mean, the computer, like we just, there's no time, downtime to just chill and like figure out like, what do I really want in my life? What do I personally want? You know? Yeah. And do I, did I feel like any joy today? Yes. That took me like by surprise. Somebody said that to me a few days ago and it was just, of course, if it was like a normal Tuesday, you yeah. know, in January in New York, it's freezing. I'm like, who, who is feeling joy today? <laughs> Nobody. But it just kind of made me realize I have planned nothing today that actually would make me really smile. Mm -hmm. It's all just grinding, mm -hmm. you know, and like what yeah. if tomorrow is the last day of my life? Like I got to find a way to to do that even yes. just a little bit, you know, whether it's like dancing in your living room or something silly like that or... You're so right. That's it. I mean, that like in a nutshell, I mean, we don't do that enough. We just absolutely, we don't spend time with our friends and, you know, the whole, I love the blue zone, you know, oh, the blue I zones. Oh, I too. Yeah. Um, and it's about connection and downtime and spending time with the loved ones, people who really like do bring you up um, and not the ones that don't, you know, that's stressful. So, and, you know, eating real food and enjoying your life and laughing and, you know, the connection is huge. I love getting really like actionable yes. towards the okay. end of my interviews on <laughs> like, just because I think that people come to my platform who are trying to figure out a health issue, what, what, whether they know they're just not feeling great, but they don't have a diagnosis or they've just gotten one and they're trying to figure out, can I do some kind of like protocol or what could I try before I have to go to another doctor or something yeah. like that, or while I'm seeing doctors. Um, so, you know, you mentioned, obviously you reverse cancer, but also you reverse Hashimoto. So to me, you're like a, <laughs> just a perfect student. Um, and, you know, just a handful of things that you think were really the most impactful that would be good places to start. Obviously, right. self-love yeah. is number right. one, which is right. also the hardest. Right. Um, and just giving yourself a break. We're yeah. all working on this, but it's the most important thing. I know yeah. this from so many people now, including you. Um, and then diet and really nourishing yeah. yourself, it seems like, is the, is the second component. Right. Is there something specific about soup? Because I know that's your <laughs> cleanse. Soup is really about, I am telling everybody to up their veggie count. Nine or 10 cups of veggies a day. You know, that is not with the RDA recommends, but um, we just don't get enough. That's our lifeline. You know, that's where the antioxidants and the phytochemicals and the vitamins and the minerals are. I mean, that is, that's our lifeline and we're not eating enough veggies. Um, so soup for, to me is like getting nutrients at a cellular level. So I love pureed soups because that's so easy. Your digestive system doesn't have to like work too hard. Um, even the chunkier ones, sometimes your digestive system doesn't have to work that hard with those either, but you are digesting and absorbing those nutrients at a cellular level. That is huge. That, that's why I got into the whole soup thing. And when I was diagnosed with cancer and I started juicing, that's another one of my things that I preach about all the time. I'm a huge juicer and I juice greens almost every day. And so, and I sometimes just do really simple things like celery, cucumber, lemon, ginger, romaine. It's like really refreshing and simple. And if you're not a big greens person and love drinking that, that is like the perfect thing. Tons of nutrients. It's not only a multivitamin, but it's a mineral and it's a blood tonic. It cleanses your blood. It's huge and it also helps the liver. It helps the intestines. You know, the different veggies have different detoxifying systems of the organs. I mean, and it's hydrating and, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful thing to like up the ante with those veggies. Again, you can definitely get your cups of veggies in with a soup and with a juice. So, I would say, I mean, there's a big thing right now with the celery juice. Yes. Everybody's juicing oh, I'm celery hearing juice. about it way too much. I know. Yeah. It's getting a little overkill. I mean, I've had, I've had... I mean, it's working on me. I'm about to go home and, you know, and, try this right. celery juice. Yeah. No, it does. It's like there is some beautiful things about celery juice, but there's also some beautiful things about just greens in general and juicing. I mean, I don't put any fruit in my juices, so that's too much sugar. Um, 
apple, pear, it's way too much sugar going into the bloodstream and it gives you like an insulin rush. We don't need that because we eat enough sugar. I eat fruit. Okay, I was going to ask you that. I love fruit. It's anti-aging and I know a lot of people these days aren't eating enough fruit because of the sugar or potential candida and yeast and all those things. But fruit is the fountain of youth. Um, and these veggies are really just crucial. And fiber. We don't eat enough fiber. So that was my maybe stupid question about juicing. Yes. I thought maybe because of you're sort of losing some of the fiber yeah, right are. by juicing it. So right. I, I was always of the mindset that you should just try to eat those veggies or puree yeah. them in a, you know, more like a smoothie type, type of thing to not yeah. lose the fiber. But is that not No, true? that's absolutely true too. Okay. So you can do that and that's why smoothies are good and that's why the soups are good because you still have the fiber intact. Um, and this is parade. I like the idea of the liquid, you know, nutrients into the cells um, as an addition. It's not a meal replacement. It's just my, it's my multi, basically. I see. It's my, okay, so you're so, taking all of your micronutrients yeah. from this juice rather than yeah. from a supplement or something Rather than like from that. a supplement, right. Got it. And then fiber, I add a lot of fiber to my diet. So we usually get 15 grams, we need 25 grams. We need the fiber to flush us out of all the toxins that we're talking about that are in the system. So, I mean, flax and chia and all those wonderful things, plus the complex carbs, you know, the legumes, which I know right now there's controversy on legumes and beans from yes. Dr. Gundry's book. Yes, so. I saw him speak and felt very nervous because yes. I also love, as you mentioned, the blue zones and yeah. nuts and beans are, I mean, nuts are not a legume, but beans yeah. are, and that is like the foundation of a lot of these Diets. Blue Zones diets, and I was very confused, and I think that's why it's really um, important, especially with the wellness scene, yeah. to not be dogmatic. Yes. Right? I mean, Absolutely. be dogmatic about vegetables. I think everybody would agree with you on right. that. Right. But every, with everything else, um, it's really about if you're reversing a chronic health issue, yeah. not you're playing into also your ethnicity, your genes, your lifestyle. Like, there's all these different things where, you know, maybe you can handle some really delicious sheep or cow dairy here yeah, and there and, and others where like that is an attack on your immune system yeah. and you shouldn't go anywhere near that right. and those two things are um, really different yeah pay attention to what works for you when you eat it because your body tells you like that didn't do so I didn't do so well with that you know you have maybe bloating or constipation or you know all those things and you just don't feel energized I mean you know, we need to pay attention to the foods that work for us and what don't work for us. Because I, I healthy my, things do work and don't work. Uh, absolutely. I tell my husband when he needs a nap after he eats, yes. this is not a good sign. Yes. He's like, oh, no, those are unrelated. I'm like, oh, no, they're not. Right. You know, so right. it's really pay attention. If you're tired, you should be energized by food, as you're absolutely. saying, not depleted by it. Right. Um, it means that your body was clearly like, no, thanks. That wasn't you working. Know? Or it was too much. Maybe it was overload. I would say, you know, really watch the animal protein. Like, I think it's hard for our body to break down that saturated fat. It's so concentrated. And we're not just eating, like, you know, this is four ounces, the palm of your hand. That's, that's so little. We're eating, like, six ounces, minimum six to seven ounces per, you know, per meal. So that is, like, basically 30 grams of protein. If you're getting, like, if you're eating three times of that, you know, you're getting 90, 100 grams of protein. That's too much. Your body can only break down so much protein per hour per day. So that just sits in your tissues and does turn into fat. Um, and it's, it's not good. So animal protein isn't bad. It's just that we're overdoing it too. Are you including fish mm -hmm. in that? Yeah. It's all of that. It's like fish, chicken, turkey, all of it. red meat, everything. And I know, and I love fish. And, and they all have valuable eggs. nutrients. Eggs. Yeah, That's we do. Bummer. We eat. We just eat too much. So it's about just kind of watching, you know, not overdoing these things. Yeah, learning, learning about plants again. Yes. And um, making that the foundation, it sounds like, is right. a great way to reverse cancer, Hashimoto's. Yeah. I mean, you, you're like really you've done <laughs> amazing things. So Working at it. Um, Still, it's a work in progress. The last thing that I like to do is ask um, how you, you know, there's so many different wellness things and you know you can get you could get out of bed and an hour later you're still doing your morning routine these days right <laughs> it's true. like it's so oh, ridiculous yeah. I, someone should make like a spoof on that because it's so silly how much we all have to do before <laughs> we can you know start our day now but that's a good idea <laughs> I, I know I think about that as yeah. I'm rolling my eyes right. through my process 
Um, but same here. Um, we say, you know, get well be is our name, and so we think it kind of uh, brings an action to, you know, health doesn't just good health doesn't just happen to you, right? It's about the 100 choices that you make a day, which are truly your healthcare. Yeah. In the end, and yeah. so. Um, would you tell us how, you know, the couple of absolutely can't miss things that you do every single day now that you feel like are a foundation for prevention um, of diseases coming back that you say, you know, I get well be by whatever it is, because that's, yeah. uh, that's something I feel like our audience loves to hear about. Well, I get well be by, I make sure that I sleep, like, and I get eight to sometimes nine hours of sleep. I mean, that that sounds like a lot, I know, but sleep is the foundation of really getting you past any health issues or like you not getting health issues. I mean, that is so crucial. I would say the juicing. I mean, I'm a little obsessed with that um, because I feel like it's just propelled me into a whole different atmosphere with my health. I mean, it's anti-aging and it gives me the energy that I need to like get everything done for the day. And those two things are a must. Oh God, there's so many. Um, and I would say, you know, my emotional well-being is, you know, really taking stock in how much I do appreciate myself. You know, it's a hard thing to say, and I still have to work on it. I'll probably have to work on it for the rest of my life. But to be grateful for who I am and what I've done in my life, and even in good and bad, everything that's come my way, you I know, and all that. the hardships. Yeah, so. I love that. Um, we talk a lot about gratitude exercises nowadays, right? And the, the scientific power of gratitude, but never really have I thought about saying when I say those exercises in the morning, just what I'm grateful for of saying like, and I'm grateful for me, me. you know, I, that's, it I, should be a no brainer. <laughs> and yet I don't do that. I know it's um, true. It's amazing what we've kind of let slide. Um, but it is a work in progress, right? We yeah. all get there when we're supposed to get there. Exactly. I love that. Alyssa, thank you so much for sitting down with me to share all this great information. Your story is so inspiring and incredible. And I know a lot of people, whether they've had cancer, or going through cancer, Hashimoto's, or anything else, it's really applicable to everything you might be going through. Learn from you know what you've done and hopefully pick up your book, also Cancer Hacks, if that's something they're really um, curious about. I think it's totally fascinating. So thank I you. sure will. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you everyone for joining us.